Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Tuesday, November 29th, 2016. And this is a look at why is Venus so bright. It's that time again. Indeed, it is that time again, approximately once every one year and seven months, when Venus comes round into our evening sky after being in our morning sky. And in fact, I uploaded this video, Why is Venus so bright, back on October 27th, 2013. As you can see from the description underneath, it says we take a look at the question many people are asking, why is Venus so bright at the moment? And so since it's that time again and everybody's asking the same question, we're going to take a fresh look at why is Venus so bright. I could have just re-uploaded this video, but we'll take a fresh look at it. So here goes. So as you can see, I've got Starry Night set to Fort Worth, Texas, United States. We've got the date set to November 28th, 2016, and the time is 6.30 p.m., and we're looking towards the southwest, and there is a very bright object in the sky, brighter than any of the other stars in the surrounding area. What could it be? It's the planet Venus. Indeed very bright. It is the brightest star-like object in the sky. Jupiter is the next brightest and Venus is only rivaled by the moon in the night sky. So why is it so bright? Well, first of all, let's take a look at where it is in relation to the Sun. And I'm going to turn on the orbit line so that we can see where Venus is in relation to the, the Sun. And we can see that the Sun is down below the horizon here. And so we can see that Venus is actually coming up from around the back of the Sun. It's still on the far side of its orbit as it comes up and around, and then it'll come out to this point here, which is called greatest elongation, and then it will come around and it will be heading towards us, getting closer to us. So the whole time it's actually getting closer to us now, but it will be getting even closer as it comes around and approaches us. When it gets to this point here out at greatest elongation, it'll basically be coming straight towards us, and then it'll curve around as it comes over, and then as it heads down, eventually it will be crossing over, um, almost in front of the sun, but below it. Um, if it was crossing over in front of the sun, we would see a transit. So now let's take a closer look at this again, and let's zoom in on Venus, and see what it looks like when we zoom up on it. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on a field of view marker, for Venus and I've set this one up already for today's date so this is just a circular reference of our field of view and I've set this at approximately the same diameter of, um, of Venus that's an angular diameter not a physical diameter okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to step the, the date forward we're on the 28th of November and I'm going to step this one day forward and we're going to see what happens as Venus comes around on their orbit and gets closer to the Earth. Well, you can see that the phase is changing. It's now at what would be equivalent to a first quarter or last quarter moon. And as you can see, as it is approaching, it is obviously getting bigger. So the area of Venus that we see illuminated is actually larger. And this is why it's getting brighter. So let's go back out and we'll look at another aspect of Venus. What I want to do now is compare the position of Venus in the sky. In fact, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll actually take this back a couple of months. Let's go back to August. Okay, even though we've got the sun above the horizon, you, you'll understand where I'm going with this. I'm also going to view the uh, the grid for our local sky just to give us a reference point i'll turn off the halo effect for the sun just to make things clearer of what's what and again i'm going to step this forward um, but before i do that i'm going to turn on the local path and we're going to see venus's position in the sky relative to where it is on, on any night. 
So we're starting this on August 28, 2016, and I'm going to run this forward one day at a time. And we're going to see the path that Venus takes through the sky. So at the moment, we're in the uh, west southwest. So we're just south of, of west, and I'm going to run this forward. So this is the apparent path that Venus takes through the sky. And you can see it's curved around here to the southwest, and then it's curving back up and around. You could also see its position on its orbit there. So we've actually come around from the back of the sun, up and over, and now we're on the front side of the orbit. So this certainly takes us into the southwest, where everybody is seeing um, Venus at the moment. And uh, let me just run that forward again. And now you can see that Venus is, has, has actually passed the Sun on the top side, not the bottom side, as I said. And it is now heading back in, in the other direction. So it would now be visible in the morning sky by April 3rd, 2017. Now another thing I'm going to do is we'll bring it back to now. And bring this back a few hours. I'm going to turn off the local path so we can see what's what. And people are talking about what, what constellation Venus is in. Let me just pause that. Let us select Sagittarius. And it is right in Sagittarius because people are talking about this bright object being in Sagittarius. Well, that's exactly where Venus is. So there we have it, folks. That is why Venus is looking so bright. It is getting closer to us as it comes around on its orbit. And it will get closer to us. And it will get brighter. I'll put a link in the description area to this previous video that I uploaded on October 27th, 2013. Three years ago. And you can compare this video to this older one. And also... I've set up this playlist of previous videos, Venus videos, Bright Western Sky Object, and you can have a look through those. Again, I'll put a link in the description area underneath this video, and you can check back on these past videos that I've done over the years, all dealing with this bright object in the western sky, which, as I say, comes by approximately every one year and seven months. It's back in the same position. So either in the morning sky or in the evening sky. One year and seven months, it's back in the same position as it was. And by the way, if you're impressed with the astronomy software that I'm using, it is Starry Night Pro. I'm using version 6. And if you're interested in this astronomy software for yourself, I did recently do a video about a special offer from Starry Night Astronomy Software's Complete Space and Astronomy Pack version 7. I'll put a link in the description area to that video and you can check that out for yourself. As always, to check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex, you'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching.